Hello friends and welcome back to the show. In this episode, we'll take a look at using pre-ferments for improving your bread. There are various pre-ferments that can be used in bread baking, like a sourdough leaven, a bega, a polish, a flying sponge. We'll be using a bega in this episode. Using pre-ferment will improve the crust, the crumb, the texture, the flavor and the keeping quality of your bread. And it's super easy to do as well. As always, you'll find all the details down in the description box. So let's see what equipment we need. A bowl, you need scales, dough scraper, temperature probe, a razor blade for cutting your dough, or a sharp blade, we'll look at that in a minute. I'll use a cast iron skillet for baking. This is for best results. If you have one, use it. And then bread basket. Now if you don't have a cast iron skillet, it's fine, just use a tray with some non-stick paper. And if you don't have a bread basket, use a cake tin lined with a tea towel. And if you don't have razor blades, use a sharp serrated knife for slashing your dough. Now on to the ingredients. Very basic. Flour, water, yeast and salt. It's what we do with these ingredients that makes it special. So let's start by making the pre-ferment. To make a pre-ferment, you basically take a portion of the total water a little bit of yeast and a portion of the total flour. Mix it together and you let it ferment for a number of hours. And because that flour is fermented for a longer time than the bread will be, it will have a much stronger flavor and we will add that flavor into our final dough. Also the acidity in the pre-ferment will make the dough stay fresh for longer. So simply take your water, add a pinch of yeast, add a little bit of the flour, mix it all together and that's about it. For this particular bread, we are pre-fermenting a quarter of the total flour, which is quite a large amount, and you can adjust it up or down if you want to. But in any case, just mix it around until you don't see any more dry flour, and cover it up and leave it to ferment. You can leave it in a bowl, and I'm place it in glass, so you can better see how it rises. It took me around 10 to 12 hours, it should definitely triple in size. You can't really go wrong with this, even if it overproves a little bit, it'll still work. Right before we start making our dough, my kitchen is quite warm, 25 degrees C, so I'm going to use water that's around 90 degrees. So grab the bowl, add the rest of the water, and then add the rest of the yeast. Give it a good mix, let the yeast hydrate for a minute. Then add your salt and give it a good mix to dissolve any large salt crystals. Then add the rest of the flour. We're not adding the pre-ferment yet, that'll come in a minute. So grab your scraper and give your dough a mix in the bowl until you don't see any more dry flour. And once you're happy with that, tip it out on your table and start kneading it. This is not a very sticky dough, so I'm going to use a regular kneading method. I like to press down and forward with the heel of my right hand and then using the fingers of my left hand, I fold the piece of dough under the heel of my right hand. Then turn and repeat. I find this to be the most efficient way of kneading your dough. Now you want to do this for around 2 minutes or so, not for too long just until everything's well combined and there's a little bit of gluten going on. And now we can add the bigger, the pre-ferment. And as you can see, it's super bubbly, it's puffed up and still nice and strong when I pull it. If it's running and you could just pour it out of your glass then that means it's over fermented. But this looks just about perfect, so we can add it to our dough. There's no special methods here, just fold it in, squish it in, punch it in, whatever as long as you combine those two together. And then just keep kneading using the same method as before. It took me another five minutes or so. Kneading by hand doesn't really take that much longer than kneading with a machine. So once the dough has become less sticky, nice and smooth, full of gluten, nice and bouncy, we can collect it up into a bowl and let it ferment. Always take the temperature of your dough after mixing. 23 to 25 degrees C would be just about right for this. Now cover it up and we can start bulk fermentation. We'll leave it to proof for 45 minutes. Now because we added the pre-ferment, the dough will be quite lively. So if you think that it's proofing too quickly, then shorten the fermentation time. And after the first proof, we'll give it a fold. Folding will degas the dough. We'll also equalize the temperature because we will fold the outside into the inside and vice versa and we'll give the dough extra layers in the gluten structure. So place your dough on the table, smooth side down, fold the edge over the middle, going around in a circle until you have a nice tight bowl, and flip it smooth side up again, 
tighten it against the table and back in the bowl it goes. Simple as that. Then we'll cover it up, leave it for 45 more minutes. After bulk fermentation, we'll pre-shape the dough. You will notice that I'm not using any flour during the folding and pre-shaping. This dough is not very sticky, so you don't have to. So similarly to the fold as before, we'll place the dough smooth side down and fold the edge over the middle, going around the circle until we reach the point where we started. But this time, don't fold it too tight because we need time for the gluten to relax before the final shaping. So cover it up, leave it to rest for 15 to 20 minutes. During this time, the dough will still keep fermenting, but the gluten will relax and make it easier for us to shape. Now when you're shaping, do use a little bit of flour, but not too much. It will be easier to add some more later if you need to, than taking some off. Right, watch my hands, flip the dough upside down, so smooth side pointing down, flatten it out a bit, and then grab one side, fold it over the middle, then take the other side and fold it over the first side. It will look a bit like a triangle, so take the tip, then roll and tuck, roll and tuck. And at the end, tuck in the edges and roll the piece of dough over them. Here's another look. So one side, second side over, take the tip, roll it, tuck it, roll it, tuck it. What we're trying to do is create layers and tension in the dough. This takes a little bit of practice, but it's not too hard. And if you mess it up, don't worry, because the bread basket will help the dough keep its shape. And like I said before, this dough is not very sticky, so I'm not gonna flour the bread basket. All I wanna do is dust the top of the dough lightly, because it might get a little bit sticky whilst it's proofing in the basket. But all that flour will be absorbed, you will not see it on final dough. So once you're happy with that, pick it up and place it in your bread basket, smooth side down. We'll invert the dough when we bake it, so it'll be pointing smooth side up again. You can pinch to get any gaps at the ends if you want to, but it's not totally necessary, I'm just OCD. Then you can also stitch up the bottom, just to help it keep its tension. And that's it, that's our loaf, ready for its final fermentation. Cover it up, and we'll leave it to proof. Depending on how lively your dough is, this may take 35 to 45 minutes. It may take longer. But during the final fermentation, preheat your oven to 220C, no fan, and also preheat your baking vessel. And look at that, it's puffed up beautifully. Now it's ready to be baked. See that wobble? That's what you want. Make sure you don't burn your table, get your razor blade ready, get the hot pan out, and then carefully place your loaf slap bang in the middle and grab your razor blade and slash it from end to end. You want the cut to be about an inch deep or so. And as you can see, you have to fix the end bits a little bit. So cover it up and get in the oven. We'll bake it for 20 minutes with the lid on. The main purpose for the lid is to keep steam inside. This will help the dough expand. And the expanded did. It will still work if you just bake it on a tray. Now the lid's off, it can go back in the oven for around 15 to 20 more minutes. And that's your basic white bread, improved by using pre-ferment. A bread like this definitely has more character than a bog-standard flour, water, yeast and salt, quick two-hour loaf. Click on the playlist at the end of this video to see other breads made with pre-ferments. I've got a whole bunch of them. If you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. I make bread videos every Wednesday and Sunday. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.